Hi, good morning. Welcome back to Mike Makes It. What we're looking at there is a briquette maker. Now, I bought this. Uh, the idea was to make briquettes for log burner we have in the house. I currently cut up pallets and put them through it, but we get a lot of waste cardboard as well. So rather than chucking it out and recycling it with the bin men, maybe Mike can recycle it at home. So that was the idea of actually buying this briquette maker, but it not as good as I'd like it to be. I'm sure it would work. I've never used it, so um, to be fair, I can't really criticise. But yeah, that's the sort of idea. You put that in there. These handles squeeze down onto the the cardboard and the paper you've pulped up, and that's fine. And as I say, I'm sure that'll work lovely. Now, Mike makes it. We try to go uh, one better than that. So, with that in mind. I got hold of a couple of pneumatic uh, rams there and I got a lot of plate steel knocking around and some scaffold poles and uh, little brackets there, scaffold brackets. So the plan is today, see what we can knock up and see if we can uh, get a semi-automated pneumatic ram, ram unit. Let me, uh, I'll just put the camera down for a second. I'll connect this up to the air. You actually see the idea. So bear with me two secs. Right, I've connected the air in. There's a bit of hissing going on because we're leaking here. I've literally just screwed the terminals in and that, that's it. But the whole idea is these will push out into this tube that I filled with mashed up cardboard and paper. I'm using two of these because, uh, well, two reasons. I got two of them and I didn't really want to just use one and find out I've got to remodify everything and put two in. So I'm just going to go for two straight away. And hopefully I'm going to get a little bit more power there. But I've got a, an actuator here, quite nice. Left, right, up, down, in, out. So here we go. A bit noisy, forget the hissing. I've got enough stroke on that. And they're not going to fall on the desk. I've already tried it. But I've got enough stroke for that, for that tube. That tube's actually going to get cut down a little bit. I got a few extra plans. I, I want to squeeze the paper, then I want to be able to eject it from the tube. So, um, hence the long stroke on these rams. So, uh, should be able to use that. I got a feeling the apparatus I'm going to make is going to be quite tall because of this, but we'll see. Let's close it up. I can balance the rams. There's taps here. I can balance them uh, should one be a little bit quicker or slower than the other. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I've done a few sketches. Now I've got to do a bit of cutting and drilling. So uh, that's what you'll see me doing now.
those couple of plates I've needed there, there and there, they're 12 mil plate. So they're fairly thick. I could use um, this. I've used this before to cut through it. But because it's steel and 12 mil thick, it was a bit hard going. So I've used a plasma cutter. It's got to be, oh, I've got to be honest, I think it's the first time I've actually used it for a proper job. I had a little practice with it when I had it, which must be 18 months ago. And unfortunately, it's just been sitting in the garage, not being used. So this is an ideal project to break it out and, and practice with, basically. But that's an Artec Plasma 50 HF. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember the thickness of the, the uh, steel or material it can cut through. I think it's 18 mil in one go neatly and up to 24 mil, but I'll put that in the comments, okay? So uh, don't quote me on that. It's been a little while since I bought it. But yeah, made by these people, only in Gloucester in the UK, Artec Welding Equipment. Very, very good. Superb uh, tech support, uh, sales line, etc., so uh, you couldn't go wrong with them. I'm just seeing if I can see on the top any um, any sizes. No, I'll come back to you on the sizes, uh, the, the you know, depth of cut, so to speak. Also, I've got um, a TIG welder, ACDC TIG welder. Very much a no novice on that as well. Did a couple of good joints, a uh, couple of good welds, though, I must admit. So uh, my practice is getting slightly better. So uh, you'll probably see this coming up in the project soon. But yeah, that, that's Artec plasma cutter. Seemed to do the trick on 12 mil plate for sure. So uh, yeah, I've got a lot more cutting and drilling to do. So uh, I'll crack on with that. Right, the plan now, I've got a plate cut here. I could bob a few holes in. So these actuators will actually screw to it in a vertical position. So uh, there's 10 mil holes, 10 mil threaded holes there, which I need to cut into the plate um, and a 50 mil nose on each of the actuators. Now I've gone old school. I've already cut the plate of steel, as you saw. Uh, and this is where the holes are gonna go. So we're going to put those holes in now on the pillar drill. I've got a set of hole saws there, but what I remember of them, they're cheap jack ones from Screwfix. They're Titan brand, upside down, but nevertheless, Titan. And you've got two arbors that go in the middle here. But on all of them, they go round like that. That's a little bit of exaggeration, but they don't cut bang in the middle. So um, we'll see how well this, this comes out. There's one in the saw. In the drill, I mean, um, I've got to take that back out. I've got to drill a couple of holes first, but we'll see how well that cuts a hole in the middle, the 50 mil hole. I've got no other way of doing it other than the, the, with the hole saw. So I think I'm going to be a bit disappointed, but we'll see what happens. So over to the, the drill press and away we go. Right, that's all the pilot holes done. 
These in the corners to mount the cylinders, they're going to be 11 mil. A 10 mil bolt should fit through, but I want 11 mil for a little bit of wiggle room. Hole in the middle, like I say, they're going to be 50 mil. Uh, we need the hole saw for that. What I'm going to do now, drill the, the outside ones out to 11 mil. I'm going to use um, a step drill. That'll take me to 10 mil. Then I'll do a final drill of 11 for the final hole size. So, step drill it is. I quite like using the step drills because you don't have to keep changing things. Pop this one in here and it'll do 4 mil right up to 12. So, uh, just got to go to the second from last, the penultimate uh, slot, if you like, or hole size, which is 10. And that'll do us here just fine. So here we go. They're Banggood special, so they're not sort of amazing quality, but they do last fairly well. I've got to give them that. So uh, yeah, we'll knock these out and uh, see what the hole saw does for us. Just slowly, slowly monkey. Now that won't go all the way through because of the step is less than the thickness of the steel. But uh, that should be fine. It's the 11mm drill, see how sharp it is. Not too bad. Right, real deeper the holes now. I got one of these from Axminster Tools. Deburring tool multiple sizes, I don't know what the minimum size is. Uh, if I can find what I used to use, I'll show you. Something like this. There we go. Used to work okay. But this is really, really good. <laughs> and really, really expensive for what it is. But it does the trick, so I'm just gonna blip all the holes, deburr them, then we'll get on with the hole saw. Gives a lovely finish. I don't know if you can see that on camera. But yeah, we'll crack on. Uh, so we got on with a 50 mil hole saw through there. Like I say, it's going to be a doing a bit of this, but that's all I got, so we'll give it a go. I'll give that a shot. That's 51 mil hole saw through 12 mil steel. I've slowed the pillar drill down as low as I can go with it. And we'll see what happens. Like I say, I think you'll find that the plate will be doing this because the arbor's off. Uh, at least that's my uh, my thought about it. But here we go. See how that's going? We've not even used the saw yet. But it's not got to be absolute critical 51 mil hole, so uh, it should be all right. That's the problem, the noise. put your workpiece in on your drill press if you can because we're going clockwise as we're looking from from above the workpiece wants to try to turn clockwise now if you can mount it so it can't turn or it'll catch on something like the back of the pillar drill 
if it does snatch, it's not going to rip it out of your hands and go whacking around here. If you already place it on the pillar drill back, you're fine. It's not going to twist. So uh, it'll try to twist, but it won't be able to do it. So we'll carry on. Quite ridiculous how much uh, the arbor's out. See how much movement we got here. I'm definitely gonna get down the shops. I gotta try an arbor because uh, hopefully the whole saws are okay. Everyone's the same, so it's the center. I've tried um, a new drill and there's not the drill I spent. And I'll say, unfortunately, the black part is the arbor and uh, it's all hardened, so I couldn't even drill it out for a bigger size drill. I've tried all that. But for about 15 pound, I can get a new arbor. So that might be worth trying rather than getting a brand new drill set. But anyhow, um, we'll progress. Nearly through. There we go. Just hope I drilled it in the right place. Oh, there we got that chunk out. The other thing about flipping the metal over halfway through, you don't drill a hole in your table. So uh, that's another good tip of the day. Right, let's see if we can get the other one out and see how far off I was actually with drilling the hole in the right place. So here we go, we're halfway through already, so it shouldn't take too long. <coughs> Nearly through. There we go. We'll get this cleaned up and try uh, see if it fits. All right, I've removed these. Um, I'm going to have to modify them slightly for what I need, but I took them off for now because surprisingly that don't fit through a 50 mil hole. Right, here we go. Let's see how good I was. I've deburred this slightly. And my main concern was the 50 mil hole one going to fit over there. This is 50, this is 51, so there ain't a lot of leeway. But that don't look too bad. I just uh, off shot, I'm just getting a few bolts. we we'll see if they fit in as well. Well, number one. Two, three, that's a little bit. I'm just going in. You see, it might offset the other, so that might be one I've got to open up. So I, I give myself one mil play on the hole, which. Uh, isn't unreasonable at all. I can always open them up to 12 and we'd probably be fine, but they ain't too bad. They seem to be going in finger-wise, you know, I don't need a spanner behind them. Two more to go. Get them in and proves I can use a rule. Last swamp. Well, uh, there you go. It just uh, the camera's going to go wobbly. I'm just going to move it around so you can have a little look. There we go. Now that's got to go vertical in the stand I've got to make. 
but that was one of the main things I had to get out the way so I knew where everything else went. But yeah, pleased with that. So okay, on to the next thing. I've got my Axminster bandsaw right. Again, it's another one of these tools I've bought I haven't really used in anger, but today's the day. I've got a tube here. This is um, the tube I'm going to use to squash the paper and cardboard waste into. Uh, it's too long. I just need to cut this end off because uh, inside there's some flanges. I need to get rid of that. Then I'll need to turn them around, measure 300 millimeters and chop that to length. So we're looking for, a, a, it's going to be about a foot long, 300 millimeters long. And that's ultimately going to be the final length uh, I'm hoping, of the compressed cardboard and paper. So what we'll do, I've set this up. It's got a 14 TPI blade in there. It's set to mid-range speed as recommended. Um, I've checked the angle here. This is 90 degrees. So um, we'll give it a go, fire it up, see what happens. Look at that, there we go, that's what I want. That got the 12 mil wall thickness there. That's cut through lovely. I'll check it for square. If it's good, I'll turn it around, cut it to uh, 300 mil. Well, there you go. Not the quickest cut, but it's fairly clean. You have a look at that. That's beautiful. That's what I got the bandsaw for. It doesn't get used very often, but uh, the Evolution, which I normally use, the 255, which I've done uh, previous videos on, probably would have done that, but not so neat. Lovely and square as well. Right, I've got two more bits to, well, three more pieces to put in here. That's what I'm about to do now.
Right, it's coming together now. Uh, for a moment, indulge me. This is lying horizontally. Normally, it would be vertically. Uh, the two actuators will be pushing this way. I've made a couple extra bits and pieces here. A little bit of flexibility. This is going to push down onto this rod, which will be welded to these two pieces at some time once I've decided on what length we need there. But basically, <clears throat> that will push down into the cylinder that's filled up with the mash card onto this plate. So it'll be sitting something like that. Now, what I want to do is try to eject the core, the squashed up cardboard, after it's been compressed. Now, I've got enough stroke in the, uh, in the rams, hopefully, there. There's 450 mil stroke. So the idea is, on this base plate, I'm going to have a little trap door. This, this plate is going to be mounted on the back of this plate. Let's see if we can bring it into view a little bit better for you. Imagine this is the bottom of the plate. I've got a hole cut in here for the cylinder, although the whole cylinder won't be pushing through it. I only want a hole this diameter so I can eject the core out this way. So the idea is I'm going to have a trap door there. There's a few little bits there that are going to um, hang on to hold this plate in. So when the, I want to ready to eject the core, I'll slide this plate out, expose the hole here, carry on pushing the ram, um, out comes the core onto a, set, uh, a third shelf, this here. It'll all become evident when it start to get start getting put together. The moment is just a load of little bits in my mind. But uh, this should work quite well. So the next thing to do is to work out where I want to cut the hole in relation to this assembly. So that's what I'm going to do now. We'll mark a round hole in there. Uh, probably going to plasma cut it because I haven't got a hole saw that big. Uh, I think it's, it's 60, 70, 80 mil across. Uh, I, only go, I don't go that big, so I'm going to have to probably plasma cut that out. I also want to make a little stand, or um, it's not so much a stand. I want to be able to repeat the position into this every time, because I want to be able to remove that. So I'll probably think about putting four pins just sticking up from the steel plate so you can't misposition this. So that's what we're going to do now. Let's mark a hole, bang a hole in there. And we're going to drill a few more holes in here, bolt this to the plate. And it's probably after that time to build the platform to actually hold this in a vertical position. So that's what we'll do now. Right, I'll mark out the lower plate. Because just about in pencil, see there's, t there's two circles. The inner one is the diameter of this tube. The outer one is 5 mil out from the, the edges of the tube. So I'm going to put 10 mil pins in there. I've marked 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, center hole there we're going to drill out. I've looked in the Emporium and I've got a 76 mil diameter hole saw. Now I want to take 80, the diameter of this tube is actually 80. Now this says 76 mil, well that's the inside. Um, if you marry it up with the tube here, you've got a fairly good fit. I've got about a, a mil, I've got to take out of this when it's finished. Now you saw earlier, this goes chombling around on the surface, so... Uh, it might not be too bad, but th th I'm going to give this a go. Ideally, um, one a couple of mil uh, bigger would be great. I haven't got one of them. This will work. So, um, yeah, I'm going to take this over to the pillar drill now. Drill a big hole out, then drill these four out. I'm going to tap them so I can wind in a bolt there to give a, a 10 mil stud. Then this should just fit snugly inside. So, uh, yeah, we go over the pillar drill. Interestingly, if you remember from the earlier video, the arbor for this was a bit pants because it was doing this as it was jigging it across the metal. Well, I've got a new one turned up today, so we'll give that a go to see if it's any better. But, yeah, over to the pillar drill we go. Well, this is the old arbor onto the plate we want to drill. You may recall I said it was jigging backwards and forwards. Well, have a look at this. That's the movement we got in it. 
And I'll try the new arbor we got. Just take that out. Right, let me just uh, pick up the new arbor, which is here. That's a Starrett brand. So uh, very similar to the old one, this assembly, you got some pins that push out. There to lock into the back of the hole saw. So all the pressure of the saw turning isn't put on the threads on the arbor itself. So put this together and we'll see if there's a difference. The pilot drill is the same size as the old one. So it'll fit exactly in the same hole here. So there we go. Right, power it back up. See? Very, very slight movement. Nothing like before. So yeah, the arbor shot. Well it was never good to start with, so well. Uh, that go in the bin. Right, we'll crack on with this, drill through, only halfway through, then I'm flipping the plate because I don't want a round hole in my table. Flip this over, start on the other side. Nearly through. Pretty much bang on the same inside diameter of the tube, and that's what I'm looking for. So uh, that's that part out of the way. It's cleaned up quite well. It's so we've got 80 mil uh, diameter hole there, just what we're looking for. Right, I'm going to call it a day with part one. We're going to roll over to part two because the video is going to drag on a little bit now. So um, thanks for watching. Part two will be up online uh, very very soon. So keep a lookout for that. Thanks again.